What up, peeps? This is Get With Sports, a place where you get your sports the way you want it. I'm Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team tandem out here at Sports Talk, giving you another episode. Episode 30. We 30 episodes in, bro. 30. <laughs> of uh, the Two Cent Deposit on Sports, a place where, you, where we give you our two cents on the recent sports topics in the sports world. First off, we want to thank you for listening to us while you're on the go. If you haven't already, download the Spreaker app and search for Get With Sports Media. While you're at it, click the heart button to give us a like. It is much appreciated. And click the follow button so we can be so you can be alerted to all the shows we have here at Get With the Sports Media. Also, if you, you can catch most of our episodes on our YouTube channel, search for Get With It Sports 2 and subscribe so you can be alerted to all the videos we have here uploading in the near future. Before we move on, speaking of Spreaker. We want to give shout out to homies, sports talk aficionados, uh, AA Sports, Diego Brishnikoff and Uncle Hate. They join us on Spreaker. So find them. You go ahead and search for AA Sports. That's an A, another A, <laughs> Sports. Find them over there. They on Spreaker also. So it's not just us. We got our, our partners over there. From uh, Urban Arena, check them out. Give them a like. Follow them too. So, shouts out to them to join the Spreaker family. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and get into sports, man. Everything good with you? Everything good with me, bro. How's everything? Ah, uh, is there everything good on this end, man? About to get into these sports, I gotta get some stuff off my chest, man. I kind of like the sports talk because number one, it's our stuff. We can say what we want, no restrictions. All right. All right. Number two, it's kind of like therapeutic, you know, stuff that don't make sense, <laughs> stuff that don't make sense. You go ahead and, and me and you, we just dish it out over here on on our uh, on our network. So, right, right. Good. Let's go ahead and jump on this news tape. First off, we got Alabama, the University of Alabama, and other universities offer scholarships to six foot four, two hundred eighty six pound eighth grader. Yeah, I didn't say freshman, sophomore, junior, in high school. I said an eighth grader, dude, still in grade school. Damn! School offers uh, schools offering scholarships to players still in the grade still in grade school has become a popular become popular in recent years, but Jaheem Otis might be the first who could actually play in college immediately. Once again, the six foot four, two hundred and eighty-six pound eighth grader is only entering oh well, eighth grade, but has already received offers from Alabama, Old Miss, and Mississippi State. The first thing that stands out about Otis is certainly his size, but he showed some excellent speed as well at the Old Miss camp earlier this summer. Expect to hear a lot about Otis once he hits high school and continues to his progression to the college ranks. So, congrats to Jaheim Otis being noticed in eighth grade, have skills. What you think about colleges going all the way down to high school? No, I'm sorry, going all the way down to eighth grade to give scholarships to people who ain't, I, ain't even hit puberty yet. They ought to be shameful, they so. <laughs> That is way too young for a cop to be. I mean, uh, yeah, he's a, a freaking freak of nature, 6'4", 286 pounds, going into eighth grade. So, that means he, he's already that size in seventh grade. You know, right. like, mm -hmm. like somebody's daddy sitting back in the classroom. <laughs> you know, right. but... Oh man, God, colleges, they have to be shaming. So there's plenty of plenty of more people in high school rankings that they can pursue and and all of that besides mm -hmm. going way down to the college ranking. They got him in these little camps or whatever. His balls ain't even hard enough to sustain none of this stuff, let alone grasp what what's actually going on. Right. You know, that's I think that's just too early, too much, too soon. I totally agree, man. There's got to be a limit where you get you like hands off. It should be a, a rule 
you got NCAA got all these other rules. It should be a rule right now that you don't have any hands on to anybody that's in grade school. I understand high school. I I have I have limitations to freshman and sophomore yet. You can only mess with them when right. they're junior, junior senior, senior year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But eighth grade, dude, like you say, number one, you don't even know if he likes to play uh, right. football. So it's just like, man, it's too much. Now, I did see the video when he ran, uh, I think he did ran a 40. Dude was getting it. Then I hear rumors that he could throw an 86 mile power pitch. <laughs> dude, number one, I need to check his ID. I want to check, no, that's ID. He don't even have ID. You don't have a driver's license. I need to check his birth certificate. Right. They sitting up here pursuing him. This this could be Benjamin Button. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> they don't, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have to – I'm going to keep my eye out on uh, Jaheim Otis to see what's going on with that. But, uh, like I said, don't touch him when he's in grade school, man. He's still watching Sponge, SpongeBob uh, SquarePants. Right. Supposed <laughs> Right. Exactly. Uh okay, let's move on to the next one. This one here just tickles me because it ain't my money. But anyway, Julio Jones hired dive team to find one hundred thousand dollar diamond earring in Lake. <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons wide receiver was jet skiing on Lake Lanier in Georgia recently, and he uh, and he suspects the earring worth more than one hundred thousand dollars fell off after he hit a boat wake and was tossed into the 65-foot deep water. He hired a dive team to help retrieve it. The dive team has come up empty so far, and considering the bottom of the lake is pitch black, there's a good chance the earring would never be found. Joan doesn't sound too concerned, though. As long as I'm good, it's materialistic stuff, he said. You can always get that kind of stuff back. Bruh, stop playing. <laughs> You can't sit here and act like you all good and it's all materialistic because you hired a dive team, bruh. Dive team. Yeah, a freaking dive team. <laughs> to go down there and look for your that earring. Com that comment was supposed to be made way before the dive <laughs> came into play. And how much you got to pay a dive team? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you care for that, that man. I ain't going to lie. I'll be sick sick to my stomach at $100,000. They say his, rank, his jeweler said it ranged from $100,000 to $150,000. Still, that's a lot of money you have in your one ear that you you can't tell me you forgot you had it on. He was fronting. Don't get me wrong. He jumped, you know, probably got his designer uh, swim okay. trunks on and not everything on. Got the big old bling up in his ear. Dude. Right. Number one. I don't care if it's a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand. It can't be no bigger than maybe a half an inch. So you lost a half inch earring in the lake and expected to find it. Sit your ass down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right to the bottom and still rolling somewhere. All type of sediment and dirt up on it. Right. It's probably it's probably on its way to the ocean right now. You never yeah. know what it is. I'm sure it's pitch black at the bottom of Lake Lake Lanier. Man, that wasn't gonna happen, man. And let's not, for, right. let's not forget. But let me hear what you're gonna say. Right now, let's see you put this out there. You go to Lake Lanier right now, it's about 50 people in <laughs> <laughs> they don't need no diving equipment. They <laughs> man, right? <laughs> or Oh, they found it. I ain't told them. Bam, there it is right there. <laughs> hey, man, it ain't down there, G. <laughs> it, it ain't down there, man. He probably at the club now, popping it in his ear. Right. <laughs> yeah. Dance. I wonder if this what Julio Jones felt like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you just gotta watch what you what you own, man. Hopefully, you got insurance on that bad fella. Hundred thousand dollars, yeah. Go ahead, throw some insurance on that. Yeah. All right, man. Let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna talk. We don't talk about MLB too much baseball, but this year I had to put on here in the notes, man. Umpire tosses Adrian Beltre for physically moving the on deck circle as the Texas Rangers third Texas Rangers third baseman warmed up behind Nomar Mazara in the bottom of the eighth. 
Second base umpire Jerry Davis asked Beltre to shift back over to the on-deck circle. Beltre, clearly comfortable with his location, instead decided to bring the on-deck, on-deck circle to him, pulling the tarp with the Rangers logo towards him. That crafty kind of quick thinking didn't sit well with Davis, who looked at who looked about one second away from cracking the smile himself as he tossed Bill Trey for his shenanigans. The ejection brought an early end to an otherwise perfect night for Bill Trey, who went three for three to reach within four knocks of 3,000 career hits in the MLB. Before the record, and this would tells me how petty this was, the circle was never moved back to its original spot. Bruh. <laughs> Give me your two cents on this, man. Yeah, the, the umpire was too high strong, man. I get it. It was a joke. You know, he moved, he got a few laughs or whatever. He was having a good night. He was feeling good. So he, he played a, a practical joke on what the umpire said. What is it, like three, four feet away? Mm-hmm. Like you say, he could have easily moved it back, which he didn't. <laughs> so it wasn't that important that he moved the on deck step. It was that you showed me up. Right. But now I'm going to do you one even more. Go <laughs> ass out of here. You ain't lying, man. Just like you said, yeah, you showed me out, but I'm going to show your ass to this door real quick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, man, that was petty. You know, you could have let, let it slide. You know, might yeah. say, all right, man, joke's right. over. It's funny. Put it back where I told you yeah, to put right. it. Been on, you know, sports bloopers, sports shorts or whatever. Right. You know, that's crazy. And I think, if I'm mistaken, they was playing the uh, Florida Marlins, or Miami Marlins now. And I think they was getting blown out by, like, 17 runs or something like that. So, it was, I mean, like I said, it was in the bottom of the eighth. Everybody tied. Rangers getting blown out. He could let that slide, man. But it was just funny how you got to see the video. If you got – I am I think I – did I tweet it? I think I tweeted last night. So, go ahead and check it out. It was quite funny, man. Right. All right, man. Let's get on to the meat and potatoes of this episode. I think we got two, about two of them. And we're going to jump back. We're going to jump to the NBA. Kyrie Irving asked for a Cavaliers to trade him. That's the big story this week. Everybody up in, up in, in, in the highlights of, of this situation. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you our two cents for what, what, what we think about it. I know it's late. It's Friday. But once again, this is our show. This is our mics. And we're going to give you our two cents. We had to, we had to wait to the end of the week to hear this. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Kyrie met with the, with the Cleveland Cavaliers last week and asked for a trade. Irvin wants to leave for a situation in which he is the focal point and he no longer wants to play with LeBron James. The request was directly – to the Cavaliers team owner, Dan Gilbert. James was reportedly blindsided and disappointed when he received the news. Other teammates also found also found out. Irvin's agent, Jeff Weschler, confirmed that they met with, the Cav- with Cavaliers ownership, but did not confirm nor deny the report. This continues a horrendous summer for the Cavaliers who have not only failed to upgrade, but are actively backslide. They lost general manager Dave Griffith, Griffin, who was close to Irving and signed him to a five-year deal in 2014, failed to land either Jimmy Butler or Paul George, dropped a key veteran voice in James Jones, a.k.a. Champ, <laughs> we'll to talk about that later, and reloaded with washed-up veterans. Cleveland is also deep into the luxury tax and have the oldest roster in the league. It could easily get worse. Since looming over the entire situation is the potential for James to flee in free agency in 2018. The first overall pick in 2011 named Minnesota, New York, San Antonio, and Miami as his preferred destinations. But the Cavaliers are are under no obligations to deal Irving since he remains under contract. Chauncey Billis was not among those surprised to learn about the point guard's trade request. The former finals MVP revealed Tuesday he was fully aware of the situation when he interviewed for the uh, for the Cavaliers' then-vacant GM gig and suggested there are still important details the rest of the NBA community isn't aware of. Quote, 
it didn't really surprise me. Obviously, I knew. As they were doing their due diligence on me, I was doing the same thing. I knew so much about the situation that the rest of the world doesn't know. Bruh. What you think about <laughs> Kyrie asking for a trade when he got two years with a third option left on his contract? So that's a lot going on over there. First and foremost, he already the writings on the wall. Mm-hmm. They already got over. They already what over a uh, hundred oh. million in luxury tax. Mm-hmm. Can't really sign nobody. Right. Two. LeBron leaving because hell, he ain't crazy. He see the writing on the wall. I brought y'all a championship. I did what I said I was gonna do. Now I'm finna chase these rings. The last two three years of my career, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know? And um. You know, that's – and, like, like Chauncey Billups come along after this it hit the fan and say, that ain't it. It's the most stuff going on <laughs> over over there, you know. So, right. you know, he did good just by not saying nothing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's – this team finna go from sugar to ish real quick, you know. Right, right now, I don't even think they the favorites to come out of the East. Mm. And it's it, they too disgruntled, and I know everybody going. You know, when the season starts, they going to call themselves circling the wagons and all that. But I don't even think because it's so late in the game, or whatever, and teams don't have the picks or whatever outside of Boston or you know a couple of teams that do have picks like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I think Cleveland's going to get what they want for Kyrie. I think I don't think he's going nowhere this year. Mm. I think the only gonna note you gonna take your ass right here. You look, you leave when LeBron leave, or when the playoffs, you know, loom next year, whatever. Somebody need that that trade. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll be willing to give up a little more, you know, for Kyrie coming to the team. He's saying he want to go to the Knicks or whatever. I mean, if he go to the Knicks, Knicks still ain't no playoff team. They still over the luxury tax. Yeah, he'll be probably the top name there, mm-hmm. but, I mean, but that's that's it. And I don't care what you say, I always think it's Kyrie as number two or three, not a number one on nobody's team. You know, that's not that – to me, he's just not that guy. Right. You know, that's okay. what I think. Okay. I got you. I got you. Honestly, man, I can't blame neither one, Kyrie Irving, for making this move or LeBron James being upset. LeBron James – I understand where he's coming from. He, you know, he if it wasn't for LeBron James, Kyrie Irving wouldn't get as much of the shine that he's getting now. I can say LeBron James helped him get his little shoe deal. I think he's behind LeBron when it comes to the shoe deal. Uh, he just came from China this week for promoting the shoes. There's a lot of stuff. You know what? Kyrie Irving, I don't – everybody say he's a, he wanted to be an alpha dog. I don't think he was – you got to be born to be an alpha dog. That's just me. Uh, he think he is, but I don't think he he really knows how to be an alpha dog because he didn't have any shine when he said, Duke, damn, he only played two games, if I'm mistaken, because he was injury prone. And that time that you, the, the the your rookie contract in Cleveland, your team wasn't really shining until LeBron came over there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So LeBron, I can understand LeBron being upset to a certain extent, but I do understand where Kyrie's coming from. Uh, you know, I was over here. I was, I was going to make this my team. And I signed this extension, five-year extension, before LeBron even came over here. And I'm sure he kind of like, you know, he glad LeBron came over there. You know, showed him, showed him the ropes of how to be a professional. Uh, he is a smart guy in the first place, Kyrie Irving. But, you know, it's like you get tired of being in behind. Everybody can't is not built to be a Robin. Or everybody yeah. think they better to, they 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 they're not comfortable playing that Robin role, and I think Kyrie's one of them. Um, but like I said, he didn't he didn't ask for LeBron to come over there. Okay, LeBron come over here. Okay, I got my championship ring. I've been to the finals three straight years and three straight years in a row. I'm tired of this man calling me little brother, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man. I, I know I'm young, 25, but, dude, you know, don't be calling me no kid. 
or you know, my or younger brother, you know, and now I see, I seen him, I knew it was a, it was a, a, a friction between the two, because when I think they was, it was it in April, and they was playing somebody, and they was beating them. I can't remember what team was it. Boston. It was a. Uh, God, I can't remember the team offhand. But anyway, he was sitting on the bench and LeBron's like talking to him, poking him in the shoulder. You can see Kyrie just looking in the, looking at the floor in the distance, like, man, I ain't even listening to you, bad. So I knew there's times where there was a little friction between the two. Now, once again, if if you have a team LeBron, team Kyrie, I'm on team Kyrie <laughs> for a simple fact. We know what LeBron's doing. He's sabotaging the team. You know, he he won his championship. Now he's about to make it hard for Dan Gilbert to to have a team once he leaves. You kind of get what I'm saying? Like, you know, like we just like you just got through saying the luxury tax is up there. Mm-hmm. You can't get the players to come over there. Hell, if you think about it, I ain't mad at Kyrie because all these players on this team is LeBron's players. He had Tristan Thompson get, get Mac uh get a big contract. He helped J.R. Smith make 10 to 12 million dollars a year. Hell, he made Iman Shumpert make 10 million dollars a year. So all these guys on this team is LeBron's boys. You know what I'm saying? Right. And just just picture this situation. LeBron, like the, the Cleveland Cavaliers is building, right? LeBron sitting here placing C4 <laughs> explosives all around the building. And if I'm Kyrie, like, dude, you want me to sit, think I'm going to sit here and watch this place explode when you leave? No, man, I'm going to throw my Molotov cocktail out the back window and ask for a trade, blow this all up before I, before you leave. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So honest, I'm on Kyrie's side on this. Now, for him to think that he's going to be the focal point on the team, I agree with you, dude. You kind of like, mm, you picking teams that doesn't make sense. If you want to try to be the focal point of, of a team, San Antonio for one. There's no focal point on San Antonio. You all, you just run whatever uh, Popovich put out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? He had you had one of the best power forwards ever in uh, Tim Duncan. He wasn't a focal point. You know what I'm saying? He just ran whatever whatever Popovich put out there. Right. Um, Minnesota. I know you want to play with your boy Jimmy Butler, but it's Jimmy Butler. Uh, uh, Anthony Towns out there that you got to consider they might be uh, the alpha dogs on that team. Miami, I'm shocked he had Miami on this list because uh, that's where LeBron came from. I don't think you want to go follow, you know what I'm saying, LeBron's trails and winning and whatnot. Um, to me, out of the out of the four teams, I'll say San Antonio. Nah, I'm sorry. i say New York. Mm-hmm. Will probably be the team as bad as they are. Mm-hmm. They're the they're a major market team that, that you play in the mecca of 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 uh, professional basketball. They got rid of Phil Jackson, so they're going to try to they're trying to get everything on track, and you're going to be playing with uh, Porzingis. So that to me will be the better fit. But then again, let's talk about the front office. Now you're dealing with. Uh, James Dolan. So you got to pick your poison. You want to stay here with Dan Gilbert or you want to go over there with uh, James Dolan? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but all of this doesn't make, I'm, all of this is, is, doesn't make sense because, well, I ain't going to say it doesn't make sense, but all this is just pipe smoke because if you think about it, uh, Dan Gilbert, when he introduced a new GM, uh, new GM uh, Kobe Altman, Altman he said, Kyrie's under contract for two, maybe three years. Right. Why the hell are we sitting here talking about it? <laughs> and you can, you can ask for a trade. And this was the, the last couple of years to be tickling me. You ask for a trade, but you're going to tell them where you want to get traded to. Sit your ass down. Dude. Exactly. You know, no, man, you go where I tell you. You want to leave up out here? Cool. But you ain't going to tell me where, where you, you want to go. Exactly. I'm looking out for my team. I'm do the best, give you the best interest. I'm looking out for the best interest of my team. So, damn, what you asking for? You want to exactly. go? Cool. I'll send your ass to Utah or that's why. That's why he end up at. 
Right. If I'm trying to look at, I'm looking to get get some out this deal. So whoever give me the best deal, and now recently what I heard, Phoenix Suns might have the best offer out there, even though Miami could give up uh, Drogic and uh, Justice Winslow for Miami. Mm-hmm. That looked good, but there's a lot more over in Phoenix. So if Phoenix giving Gilbert the best offer, I'm going to put a bow tie on your ass and ship you out over to Phoenix. Right. That's where you're going. That's where you're going. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're telling me where you want to go, but you better, you better take your time and talk to them people and give me what I need to, to make my team right. better. <laughs> right. ask, ask Paul George. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, man, let me ask you, are you team – LeBron or team Kyrie? Or are uh, you on the team? <laughs> I, I ain't on either one of they teams. I don't. You know, I mean, because LeBron, right, LeBron, LeBron came to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. You know, even when, even, when, even when he was in Miami, I still think and feel like he felt Cleveland was still his team and he wasn't even on the team. You know. Right. So, come back. And yeah, they was winning or whatever. They could get to the finals, but they, of course, they had their stumbling blocks or whatever. And so the team was already old. So, mm-hmm. you know, he become friends with these guys. You know, it became more of a family friend thing outside of business. So now you you lobby for like you said the signing of Christian Thompson, who ain't did nothing since he resigned. Mm-hmm. So Mon Shumper, you know, he could have stayed in New York, you know, or not signing for the deal that he did. Even J.R. Uh, Smith, come on, he hit or miss. Mm-hmm. You know, none of them. Everybody I named over there don't play defense or whatever. You know, we just – we won together. So, yeah, this my guys. I want them to stay, you know. And like you say, Kyrie, he was – I mean, he was already there. The, the guys that was there when he was there, he had like Wiggins and all. You got rid of them, you know, so – I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't know. You know, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't, I don't care either way. Whether I don't care if he stay, I don't care if he go. Mm-hmm. Uh, my opinion is, I don't think LeBron's going to be there after next year. And, and I think they're not, I don't think they're going to move Kyrie this year. Right. I think when it implodes, it's going to implode at one time. LeBron leaving at the same time, Kyrie leaving. They both just going to be gone. Right. You know, uh, I really at first because he may get traded at the trade deadline next NBA season, you know, because, you know, then teams will be more willing to, you know, give up something. Mm. But I'm going to do it now. I think he's going to start the season on Cleveland's roster. Mm. Okay. Well, you know what? If I am mistaken, I did hear rumors that Kyrie was on the trading block earlier this year for, I think it was for Carmelo. So it's not, you know, it, that's why I'm on Team Kyrie. It's like, dude, you all, I already know you was trying to trade me earlier. So, let, okay. so let's stop playing around. Let's let's get with it. I want to go now. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, like I said, it, this is it's so much dysfunction in Cleveland right now. It is. It is. And, 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 and even in the league, because now, even like you mentioned Carmelo, now he's saying, okay, this is the team I want to go to. I want to go to Houston. Mm-hmm. So, Telling me, okay, I got to know. He got a no trade clause, and the only team I can deal with as an owner is Houston. Mm. You know, right. who ain't got nothing I want, right? You no, know, or or no picks, and they ain't, they ain't got nothing. Well, you gonna be here in New York with me? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. Isn't you away? I know. You know? Right, but it's got to be. It got to be crazy to know. You see what's about to happen. You see LeBron James sabotaging this team, and you want me to sit here with you where I want the team to myself. Okay, LeBron leaves. I'm stuck with LeBron's players. Nothing can be moved because we over the luxury tax. These people right. don't want these players as is. They want me, but they ain't going to get me because you ain't you don't see nothing that you like out there in the, in the, in the market. Dude, so like you said, he going to be st- – I. I'll be shocked if you get traded before uh, training camp starts. Yeah, me too. I would. And you know, this is this is going to be so interesting to see these fools in media day, first day of training camp. <laughs> Sitting there. Because you know, LeBron James is the king of being being passive aggressive. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, he'd be sub, sub-tweeting and 
throwing shots and thinking people don't see. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Kyrie, I, sh- I can see Kyrie being tired of that. Like, dude, here we go. Here we go. This dude acting up again, man. So, yeah, I know, like you said, I can't see if, if it stays as is. I I think there's so much drama going on with Cleveland. I can't say they're the top team in the East right now with all these other teams getting better, as in Boston and I even put Miami in the mix, Washington, mm-hmm. and uh, Toronto. So it's, it's to, if they go in the season with these with these teams, and the next time the trade deadline is what in January, it's going to be interest, interest, interesting to see how this plays out. Because Dan Gilbert basically telling us as is, ain't nothing going to happen. Now. Ain't nothing going to happen. Now. He got two. He got two years left on this contract. He here. He's a, he's right. one of our best players. He's here. Right. I got. I got to keep somebody here, you know. Right. Keep so. people <laughs> And speaking of Cleveland Cavaliers, you see who they just signed. <laughs> yeah, I see Frozen went there now, which is not a bad – not now, if the team was halfway functioning. <laughs> right. You know, that's not – that wouldn't be a bad move, you know, because – Derrick Rose, I think, you know, he can't – well, he does play the point. Mm-hmm. He averaged those 18 points a game, you know, whatever. He had right. a decent season, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much time he missed, but he had a decent a decent season last year. Right. And that's that's what they was kind of missing uh, off their team too. You know, LeBron screamed all year long about a point guard, point guard, point guard, you know. Uh, Okay, now you got a chance to get one here for at least one year. Mm-hmm. That, like you said, you got so they got so much other stuff going on now, you know. And it, it started with the GM, and it's and uh, filtering all the way down through the locker room, whatever. And like you said, I I, I believe it's it's some more stuff that's gonna come out about right. this. You know? Now, why Derrick Rose ain't listening to none of it? I don't know. You know, Derrick Rose don't have a choice. He been he was uh, he been traveling across country to find a team, man. And best the best you can do. Now we talking about a man who just got through saying two years ago, I'm playing for a max salary. He looking for one of these hundred million dollar type salaries, and the best you could come up with is a one year two point one million dollar contract. Yeah, I don't I don't get that. You know what I'm saying? And just like you said, he did a great job and quiet as kept. He did a great job last season with the New York Knicks. Averaging 18 points, uh, 4.4 assists, and 3.8 rebounds. But let's not forget, there's this one stint where you left New York to sh- and came to Chicago and didn't tell nobody. All right. You know what I'm saying? So that you get, we got to wonder what's up with that. Before I even sign you, you got to tell me why you did what you did. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, but like he's stuck in he's a cav he's a cavalier. I mean, yeah, he's a cavalier right now. We gotta see yeah. we, see how this look next year, how this fit how he fits into the cavalier system. But yeah, it's just a whole lot of stuff jumping off exactly. in uh in uh Cleveland and yeah, we're going it's it ain't gonna end. I don't think it's gonna end too well. No, that, yeah, yeah, they'll be again within the next Four years, three years, that'll be the worst team in the league. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Next day, I wouldn't be shocked if shocked if Dan Gilbert sells sells the team after LeBron leaves. Yeah, <laughs> just, that's just my thoughts. But anyway, yeah, let's go I ahead. Think, go ahead. They money from him, so yeah, why not? Right. You know, <laughs> let's move on <clears throat> to the NFL. Now, this story right here—if y'all see the, the, you know, it's episode thirty, but the, but the title of this episode is. The the blitz curse of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm gonna tell you this is the reason why I named it the blitz curse of the Dallas Cowboys. They had a wide receiver named Lucky Whitehead, but he seems like he was unlucky the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Real name is Rodney, but they call him Lucky. So Lucky Whitehead has reportedly been claimed off the of waivers by your beloved, no, I guess your beloved, from your the team that you like, the New York Jets, <laughs> on Wednesday. The Indianapolis Colts, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the New Orleans Saints also express interest in the return specialist. This caps what will be remembered as one of the worst weeks in Whitehead, Whitehead's career as he goes from the NFC leading Dallas Cowboys to the Jets, who are expected to have one of the worst rosters in the league. 
white hair's <clears throat> white hair was cut by the Cowboys on Monday after a warrant was issued for his arrest on a charge of shoplifting in Virginia. However, the warrant was rescinded when police determined that uh, they had the wrong man. The 25 year old had flight records proving he was not in Virginia at the time of the, of the charge. But according to his agent, David Rich, the Cowboys did not believe his innocence. Whitehead also had his dog stolen <laughs> along with a couple of pairs of shoes and some bags and had to pay to get, it, get the dog back earlier this month. Blitz had been stolen and held for ransom. Blitz was kidnapped while Whitehead was in Florida and the pass catcher subsequently received a call from unknown robbers demanding $10,000 for the dog for the return of the dog. Whitehead said he refused to pay the $10,000, but he did pay a undisclosed amount for the return of blitz. Bruh. <clears throat> Let me tell you about this story. Right here. <laughs> Let me tell you about this story right here, man. Now the word is when he was out, he was, he was in Florida. His ex-girlfriend uh-huh. went in the house, took the dog, took the shoes, and the bags. Basically stole them. Okay. Gave the dog to a Dallas rapper, a well-known Dallas rapper. Don't ask me the name because I ain't into all these rappers here today. That's a long, that's no that's another story in itself. But anyway, a Dallas rapper. The Dallas rapper called Whitehead and told him he had the dog, had him for ransom. I don't know how, like you said in the story, I don't know how much money he got for the dog, but he got the dog back. Then two days later, Virginia police issued out a warrant to uh, issued out a warrant for Lucky, Lucky, Lucky Whitehead for a robbery at a Wawa convenience store. I think he supposedly stole somewhere around two hundred dollars worth of merchandise. Uh, the suspect gave the police. He, I guess he said he didn't have any uh, uh, ID on him, but he gave Whitehead's date of birth and social security number. That's the reason why it popped up. Uh, so he, you know he sent out the uh, uh, sent out. Uh, he had a court date. Of course, Whitehead didn't, wasn't at the court date. He didn't know anything about the court date. So they issued out a warrant for his arrest. Cowboys find out. Instead of Cowboys doing their due diligence, they it was two hours later, a few hours later, they cut uh, Whitehead. I guess they called Whitehead. Whitehead said it wasn't me. And then they cut him. Okay? Right. This is where I, this is where I, I dislike the Dallas Cowboys. I am, I'm not a Cow, Dallas Cowboys fan. I do appreciate what, what they did last year, 13-3. and three. I like the way Ezekiel Elliott did his thing and Dak Prescott did their thing. Got that. But you, you kind of like too ahead of yourself because, all right, we, we found out he got cut. They didn't listen to what he said. They basically called him a liar. You know, he, he, he got a right to be upset. But I'm glad he got picked up by the Jets. So, yeah, I could have found another team, but the Jets picked him up, and so be it. <clears throat> so they had a press conference yesterday, the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's, what's the head coach's name? Guys, just well, – I just lost – Jason Garrett. Garrett, yeah, yeah. Goes in front of the press. The press asks him questions about, man, how you feel about letting go Whitehead when he didn't do the thing? All he kept saying was, and I quote, yesterday we made a decision to be the best. I mean, we made a decision in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys. We're standing by this decision and we're moving on. He kept, every time they asked him questions, he kept saying that same statement. Yesterday we made a decision to be the best in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys were standing by a decision and moving mm-hmm. on, doing the same thing that Marshawn was getting blasted for a couple of years back. Okay. So, so that would tick me off. So this would this this is why, as of July twenty eighth, two thousand seventeen, at twelve forty five p.m., I place a curse, the Blitz curse, on the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> now. The man told you it wasn't him. You didn't believe him. You called him a liar. You cut him. The Virginia police told you 
and issued out an apology to Whitehead saying we it was mistaken identity. This is where I got a problem with Jer, uh, Jason Garrett and the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe he was going to cut him. He was on the, he was on the fence. He was borderline whether he was going to make the team or not. I got that. Tell, but say that. Don't give me this crap that you're saying that, you know, in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys, we sticking by, uh, we're standing by a decision. We're moving on. Exactly. You exactly. was wrong. You come up there and says, you know what? Whitehead was on the, was on the fence. We don't know who was going to keep him. When this allegation came up, we asked him, was it him? He said it wasn't him. We didn't believe him. We cut him. Come to find out it wasn't him. We apologized to him. We, gonna, we told him he was on the fence anyway, but we didn't do our due diligence to, to look, this, look into the situation. We just cut right. him, and we apologized. All you got to do is apologize to this man. The, the Virginia police apologized to him. Why can't you apologize to him? I agree. Now, this is where now, you know, I'm thinking about it when I was thinking about the story and typing up the notes. Let's think about this, though. If you, you was wrong, do you think maybe, maybe, Whitehead could sue the Dallas Cowboys for defamation of character? No. Okay, I didn't think so. I just threw that out there. I said, that's this got to be something where you're not going to sit here and apologize to this man for, for jumping the gun. No, I mean, they, they got a right to run their business. They decided right. they wasn't going to, you know, pursue him. Whether it, it doesn't matter whether I believe you or not. Yeah, I said we believe you, but and we decided to go in another direction or, like you said, possibly on the fence or whatever. And that's what it sounded like. They wasn't going to keep him anyway. Mm -hmm. And and that's fine, like you say, go ahead and say that, but just to to do it like they did, you know, and then he immediately get picked up by the Jets, but, you know, if it was just the Jets, then I'd be like, ah, but there are other teams that just the two, you know, I think he had, he averaged 25 yards in return, you know, last year, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, come on now, I mean, they could have. And, and and talking about, you know, don't start talking about the characters that, that y'all got on y'all team. But <laughs> y'all want to have on y'all team. You right. know, Deacon Elliott, he's fumping out. You mm -hmm. know, he already had, you had Greg Hardy over there. Uh, you know, you get you got some unsavory characters in, in Dallas already, you know. So, now this guy, mistaken identity, proven to be innocent from whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Whatever. And they... That was yeah, y'all just y'all just doing too much. Y'all doing too much right here. And then on top of that, the man had to pay to get his dogs kidnapped. <laughs> Come on. Right. right. He, had, he had a rough two weeks. I mean, that was y'all here. Y'all could have been paid paid the ransom at least. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you yeah. know what? I know his nick his his nickname is Lucky. We might just call him L, because he's been catching L's all week. Or you ain't lying. He called it L with the dog nap. He called it L with the with the false accusation. He called it L getting picked up by the Jets. Yo, right. man, forget Lucky White Side. It's just L White Side. <laughs> okay, that's why you've been catching this L, bro. And back to the dog nap. If it's true that his ex girlfriend did all this, and it sounds like his ex girlfriend did us, because if somebody break breaking my crib, they looking for. Him monetary stuff money jewelry and all this stuff they ain't looking for a pair of shoes or some bags so if this is girlfriend that did this i'm suing hush <laughs> i'm uh yeah i'm fingerprints whatever we sue he wants to uh, pay the ransom and then what well, okay if i don't pay the ransom now what you gonna kill the dog oh i mean you know what i said sue no i'm pressing charges that's what i meant to say arrest her Right, arrest her ass. Because <laughs> I all jumped off because you kidnapped my dog. Right. You know, and like you said, I, I heard uh, Jerry Jones yesterday. He was all, all mad and wasn't that talking about, you know, all this time I've been doing stuff, I, I've i been caring for my players to a fault. And you guys been on me because I, I, I don't do something. Now that I do something, y'all jumping on me again. No, nah, bro. Just like you said, Larry, all these other players d right. have done this stuff. This man told you he didn't do it, and he didn't do it. But right. let's not forget, a couple of years back, what's the running back name? Randall 
when mm-hmm. he went into the store and stole cologne. <laughs> but you kept him on the team that year. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. Then we're going to do accusations. I guess they got a rookie now that went, I came with the university went to. He just got cleared for domestic violence uh, charges put on him. You got Ezekiel Elliott. Who's just running roughshod through the Dallas, hitting DJs, driving 100 miles per hour in the 75 miles per hour zone, dealing with his own issue at Ohio State. But oh, this man got you know you ain't gonna back this guy that actually didn't do anything. Man, miss me with all that. Exactly, exactly. So once again, y'all mark it down. Like I said, July 28th, 2017, 12:45, the curse. The blitz curse of the Dallas Cowboys is real. So every time somebody get hurt, <laughs> something happened in Dallas, I'm going to throw this dog up on Twitter and on <laughs> Facebook. So you got, uh, any more two cents? you got any more money to put on this thing, man, before we move on? No, nah, it's crazy enough. Man, let's go ahead and move on to this next one, because this one here trips him out right here. John Harbaugh says Ravens are interested in Colin Kaepernick. The Baltimore Ravens head coach told reporters Thursday that he's been in contact with free agent quarterback Colin Kaepernick this summer, and the team is interested in his services. With Joe Flacco sideline for three to six weeks because of a back injury, I think it's a bulging disc, uh, the team could be in the market for a quarterback. Harbaugh did not say the team is negotiating with Kaepernick, but alluded to be open to signing him. Quote, <clears throat> I've known Colin through my brother for many years and we talked and then they got to know him very well when he scrimmaged here or we got to know him when he scrimmaged here. He and I have been talking throughout the summer a number of times. We had some great conversations on the phone and it's really been a pleasure to talk to him and get to know him. I like history and politics too and we've had some debates. He's a great guy. He's a guy right now that's being talked about. We'll just see what happens with that. With that. <clears throat> Only speculation right now. He's a really good football player, and I, and like I said, I do believe he'll be playing in the National Football League this year. All right, <clears throat> this is what tripped me out. He says this right. He said this Thursday, yesterday. Right. Come to find out this morning, <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens signed former Arena League quarterback David Olson. Who the hell is David Olson? Yeah, that's what I said, too. He played for the Kansas City Phantoms. When he was in college, he played behind Andrew Luck, transferred to Clemson to play behind Deshaun Watson. He only played two downs (laughs) in college. He quit football to be a realtor, and he played for the Arena Football League for the the, uh, Kansas City Phantoms. You pick him before a man who played in the Super Bowl a few years back, who been in the NBA, in the NFL, and better than half the players that's playing in the NFL. Hence, da, uh, David Olson. Give me the bitch. This the type of bullshit be tickling me. You sit here trying to NFL trying to say that he's not being blackballed, but you hiring. Players that have in the league, right? Has no name in the league. You hiring all these people before him, and you gonna sit him and, and piss on us, tell us it's not raining. That's the same BS. A couple of months back, when uh, what's his name? I'm 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 uh, uh Carol, Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll, and uh, and Seattle did. Oh, yeah. we bring him in. Oh, he a great player. Oh, and then a day later, oh, we don't need him. We get somebody else. This is the same bullshit, man. Give me your two cents, bro. Yeah, Don Harbaugh, you got to get his ass kicked. <laughs> you know, for even putting out this statement or whatever. Right, right. Um, and don't, right, don't even come, you know, I, you know what? It's, it's crazy because if you're sincere about it, then you're going to speak up mm-hmm. for Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. He didn't up for Kaepernick. He spoke through his conversation with his brother, like he said. So... Then, but he said, okay, well, we done had conversations throughout the, the summer. What conversations you had? Hey, Dad, <laughs> Kaepernick on the phone. <laughs> you know? Right. 
Yeah, yeah. We were okay, okay, Kyle. Yeah, we still looking at. We still looking into. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna give you a call back. You right. know, whatever. Doing your conversations throughout the summer. You know, just assuming that you know them type of phone calls he was getting. Then you know, I'll be cool if you just say, "Look, the decision ain't mine." You know, I really don't think you're a fit for the team, whatever. But you know, if they bring you in, they bring you in. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to either. I'm going to lobby for you to come in, or I'm not going to lobby for you to come in. Right. You know, I'm. I, I can't imagine him saying, hey, I want that guy in arena football who took two snaps in college over a proven NFL, you know, quarterback who actually won games and hell almost beat me. Right. You know, so <clears throat> I can't I can't see it any other way. Right. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, and let's not forget, I think last week or at the beginning of this week, uh LA Rams picked up Dan Orlovsky. Who the hell is Dan Orlovsky? Uh, it, it just boggled my mind how you trying to insult my intelligence, man. Let's yeah. call it what it is. Y'all being black. But it, and this one gets me. I understand coaches follow the orders of the, of the owners. I got that. Maybe that's what happened with Carol and that's what's happening with Harbaugh. They're like, no, nah, we can't pick him up. He, he's, he's toxic. Okay. Got that. But let's not forget <clears throat> you know, I think it's the New York New York Giants owner said that he got emails and letters saying how, you know, if if you pick up Colin Kaepernick, uh, I'm not watching any more games and, you know, uh, I'm giving up football or, you know, I'm, I'm a protest, you know. Okay, I understand you get them letters. I understand Kaepernick's toxic. I got that. But this – but – I can't remember the the quarterback that used to play for the Panthers when he had made some racial, oh god, racial slurs, racial slurs rather. Quarterback. Oh uh, gosh, I wish Big Q was here. He would let me know. But anyway, uh, his name is like right there. I might have looked it up. But anyway, he continued playing. Let's not forget Michael Vick when he got out of jail and and Andy Reid picked him up. For the Philadelphia Eagles, they got some pushback about the situation. But hell, look what he did. He showed up, got on the team, kicked out uh, uh, Donovan McNabb, and ran the team. He played for the Jets. He played a couple of years after he got out of school, after after the the killing the dogs. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna get some pushbacks. But if you if you're looking at the best interests of your team, instead of picking up Dan Orlovsky or picking up David Olson. Pick up Kaepernick. Yeah, you know what? Number one, you're going to get some headlines, whether it's good or bad. You know, like, like they said, uh, any, any any news better than right. no news. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you never know. He might show up and and and, and, and just blow up, blow your team up, make it, run, make it run to the playoffs. You never know, but ain't nobody giving them a chance because everybody's scared of the, of the ooh, we're going to get protests. Oh, it just tickled me, man. Just tickled me. Yeah, it's it's man, it's just it's just American society. It's crazy. Uh, still very much uh politically mm -hmm. motivated. It's uh still you know racially motivated. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, you know all all of the above. You know, and this this one here is just blatant. I mean, when have you? On a quarterback, not not even get a trial, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's twenty some, thirty some teams in the league. I ain't saying any team had to hire him. You right. didn't even let do it on your field, <laughs> right? You know? right. You ain't, you ain't even letting them in your building, you know. Come on, cause he said he got on the, he took a stand, he got on the knee, he went against the flag, or whatever. Come on now, you know what I mean? When this country actually burned that flag, now they don't do it openly like he did. Yep, you know they don't, you know, shit on like he did openly. But hey, it's 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 way it's way too much now. When you when you stop a guy from earning an honest living like that, you know, then it's 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 way too much. You know, you you rather go get arena football players, and again, somebody got hired. You know, I'm not I'm not knocking that, mm -hmm. but. Like you said, when you talk about, you know, you know, interview him, you know, talk to Colin Kaepernick and y'all, he looks good. And depending on 
you know, the, the situation, we'll definitely consider bringing him in. Yeah, they had no intentions of bringing that guy in right. for no, no tryout or nothing like that. Yeah, hey, okay, you're going to bring bring him in and bring the arena guy in then. Exactly. People, you know, if you're going to do it that way, you know. So, no, they had no intentions on doing that. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. <clears throat> and and for note, the player, the, the Carolina Panther quarterback I was thinking about was Kerry Collins. Okay. Yeah. He used to he, be here. Huh? He was here for a minute, wasn't he? Kerry Collins. Uh, looking up right now. And you are, wait a minute, let's see, he played for the Panthers. Saints. Giants. Giants again. Raiders. Titans, Colts. No, 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 no uh, Bears. Okay. So, but <clears throat> close the show off, man. I'm going to just we keep it real here. Get with the sports. If you've got any problems, just email us. Hit us on Twitter. I'm just going to put it out there real quick. Let's think. You think the NFL owners might be saying to themselves, we're going to keep Colin Kaepernick out just to show these other players that is, what, 78, 75, 78% black? Stay in your lane. Toe the line. We ain't that. You just, you, we just got you here to play. We don't need, we, we don't need you to speak your mind. It's very, it's very possible because they kind of got the raw end of the stick when, uh, when they made them interview black coaches, you know, for jobs mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or whatever. They, I don't think a lot of them got over that either. Mm. Good point. But, uh, this like, hey, you know, we're going to stick it to their ass now. You know? <laughs> right. How many black owners, NFL owners in the league? Exactly. Zero. Exactly. Ex- hey, just, it, it, you might not want to say it, but we see the writing on the wall, man. You know what hey. I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. Permanent action, action of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, all right, man. Real quick, let me ask you two quick questions before we leave up out of here. Hey. Um, what were they? What were they? Uh, what's it? <sighs> Le'Veon Bell has not showed up to training camp and did not sign his franchise tag tender of twelve. I think it was twelve point one million. Mm. Why do you think what's going to happen? Is he going to play this year? You going to sit this out, or you going to give up? And, gonna, and I know you know what it's it's, it's a good. It, I am not seeing. Have we ever seen a player sit out a year because of contract issues? Not not recently. I mean, you had to go back into the eighties and nineties. I know. You know I for, mean, for that, I you I know what think. I don't I don't. Uh, I'm with Le- Le'Veon Bell. He wants to get paid like a wide receiver because he does. He catches like a wide receiver. But we ran through this ago with Jimmy. The tight end for the the tight end used to be the tight end for the Saints. Jimmy the Graham. Jimmy Graham. He was he wanted wide receiver money. You see, we see how that ended up. He didn't get that. That's the same thing I think gonna happen with Bell. You know, it's a good fight, but come on, man. Okay, know. It's okay. 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 Let me ask you this then. Oh. With the tight ends. Okay. Then you got Grunt. Gronk gave catches just as much as wide receivers. He's an integral part of a wide receiving core. And mm-hmm. the, should he get I, – I think he does get paid like a wide receiver. Ooh, I'm going to have to look into that. Ah, good question. I don't think he does, but I – mean, you know what? Come on, man. Let's keep it real. He played for your doing in the Patriots. They, they don't pay people like that, man. But I'll check into I, that. But, you know, I, yeah. I just – I you think Gronk – 65 million. Ooh, really? I check it out. I'm gonna check that out, man. But uh but next thing. Okay, while okay. you check that out. Uh okay. the latest NFL findings said that the American Medical Association has found evidence that of brain disease in 99% of the 200 former football players that they studied from the NFL down to high school. Is that you think that scared people? No, well, you know, I, I, number one, I got girls. <laughs> yeah, I know you have boys. That would you, if you knew this, would you have your your boys play football? I don't think it would scare me. I don't, I, 
Right. I don't think it would scare me. I think if they wanted to play, I wouldn't stop them from playing. I would just let them, you know, information is key. Once mm -hmm. you got all the information, then the decision is totally up to you. Mm. You know, the, you know that's that's the route I would probably take because I played the sport. It's mm -hmm. the sport when you playing it. You know, I like everything about football, playing the game, or whatever. So it's gonna it would be hard to tell somebody not to. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, especially when you can step off the curb and get hit by a bus. You know. Or in the inner city, you know, just be wrong place, wrong time, you know. I mean, so so many other things out here. Damn, I could have been playing football. Still got <laughs> you know, so <laughs> right, right. You know, so it's it's crazy. But I would think I would load people, which is now I think what's going on too. People are getting fed a lot of information and they, they make a better choice, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I agree with I hear what you're saying. If and I think I'm trying to find this tweet that I put out there long I think it was two days ago, and I'm looking for it real quick. There was a situation where a former football player ran through a glass door at a convenience store and the wife said that she thinks he got CTE. I mean, he went flying. He was acting like he was tackling a quarterback and ran mm -hmm. right through a glass door. I think I have it on – I'm trying to find it on Twitter real quick. Here it is. It says, former NFL player – I'm going to retweet it and put it out there. Former NFL player Brian Price doesn't remember running through a glass door. His wife believes he had CTE. It was on the Sporting News on a day ago. So I'm going to retweet it real quick. For you guys out there, check out, go to at Get With The Sports and see it. He's running through the parking lot, going straight through the door, not even slowing down. Just ran straight through the glass door, man. So that's wow. stuff like that is sad to hear. So I'm retweeting it right now. So, you know, it, it, that stuff's serious. You know, people, I think the NFL were trying to cover it up, but you can't cover it up, stuff like that. And I've seen um, – Concussion, <laughs> dude. I never saw that. Yeah, get it. Yeah, you watch that, man. You be like, no, nah, I'll hell to the no. Nah. You know, you got players now. They because of the uh, financial situations, they're making more money now. Uh, they go into school. Mm -hmm. uh, they have chances to do be to do analysts or color work for um, networks. I, they retiring early now. They like uh, after a certain time. Uh, I got I made my money. I'm out. They're making financial decisions better now. So it's like you know, ain't no more. When I get 32, 33, I'm gonna keep on playing. It's like damn. Then when I hit 30, peace. I'm gonna go do other situations. Okay. So, yeah. So it's it's good look, man. I, I you know the CT is for real, man. So uh, 99 percent. They ain't no. That ain't no. Uh, for, out of two hundred former players, can't be playing with that man. So, all right, man. Let's go ahead and close shop. We've been on here an hour. <laughs> oh. All right, man. <clears throat> and we ain't still didn't get to my NFL players to contracts to NBA NBA money to NFL money. But we gonna get to that one of these days. We'll we gonna talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh, man. The crew here at Get With The Sports wanted to thank you for taking the time to listen to the Two Cent Deposit on Sports podcast. Once again, while you're here, click the follow button so you can be alerted to all the new episodes we have here at Get With The Sports Media. If you're watching us on our Get With The Sports 2 channel, YouTube channel, let us know what you think about it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Anyway it goes, don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Twitter, me at Get With The Sports. My partner in crime, Brandon, here at LEB412. Read the post on our blog page at getwithsports.wordpress.com. Follow us on Facebook, forward slash getwithsports, or contact us via email at getwithsports2 at gmail.com. Shouts out to, all, to our Urban Arena fam, AA Sports, Team Board TV, Kane and Ice, TWSS Sports. Left handed from New York. We're about to do the damn thing here. We might have one of them fellas on our show next week, next Friday. 
on two sets of problem sports. We'll see. We'll let y'all know by then. But anyway, bro, get with the sports place where you get your sports with a little swag. I'm glad. And I'm Brandon. The best tacting tandem out here in sports talking. As always, be good, be safe, get with it. Peace. Thank you.